Hi everyone, Steven here. If you ever wonder about what's going on underneath the covers with NSX Federation when we talk about routing, what goes on when I have all my locations set as all primaries, or if I have my locations set as primaries and secondaries, right? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this episode. So stick around, we'll see you in a bit. Hey, thanks for sticking around. So why don't we jump right into it? I have my Federation site already built. If you watch that video, me building my, uh, my Federation site, that's a good one. Um, if you're not familiar with Federation, you really want to brush up on that. I do have my Federation video. I also have my multi-site video. I'll leave links to that towards the end. Um, you may want to take a look at those. By the way, I always like to throw this in the beginning. Um, if this is stuff you're interested in, hey, please subscribe to the channel, right? It does help me out. The more subscribers, the better. Uh, I'm trying to hit that thousand mark so I can get monetized by YouTube. Anyways, I appreciate those of you uh, that have already subscribed. Really appreciate that. Uh, and why don't we jump into it? So enough of that. So first of all, let's get into this. All right. So... Uh, if you watch me set up my environment, I've got a global manager. I've got one global manager here. I don't have a cluster of three. I've got a standby. Uh, technically, I might just get rid of that to save resources. I'm limited on resources. I actually have two sites. I have a site A and a site B. Okay. Again, my art taps are up. I've created a... Um, let's actually look at my picture. Let's jump over to here uh, and see how I'm kind of set up in my lab environment. So I'm just going to look at my iPad here and general walk you through it. So I've got a site A and I've got a site B set up. Okay. It's very minimal, minimalistic. Each site has a vCenter server. Each site has an NSX manager. Uh, so there's a manager at, NS at site A and a manager at uh, at B, I created a stretched web segment. That's a web segment I created. I have a tier one stretch gateway and I have a tier zero stretch gateway. No services involved here. I'm not doing any services. I'll probably do a video on that because it gets a little bit different, right? So, um, Anyways, I think we have enough to talk about in this one. So my my stretched web is the 172.16.10 network. So my uh, web one, actually, I just noticed a typo here. My web one is on site B, and it has the dot 11. My web two is on site A, and it has a dot 12 address. Okay. Um, you'll see my tier zero is deployed as active active. And uh, in my case, I actually did it primary set secondaries. And what that means is uh, all my communication is going to go out the primary site. Okay. So again, if this web one wants to talk to the outside world, it's got to come across here and go out the primary. Okay. There's no local egress. That's what I have set up right now. I'll show you in the video what happens when I do set it to all primaries. Okay. So when we talk about my edge nodes, um, my... I have a cluster, an edge cluster at site A with two edges in it. I have an edge cluster at site B with two edges. And those ones I'm actually using for my RTAPs. I talked about my RTAPs in the previous video, so you can take a look at that. I don't know if there's anything that needs to be said more about that. If there is, leave comments below and let me know specifically. I'll see what I can do. Um, now, from now in my lab environment, you know, I'm limited on resources, folks, right? Uh, I do have a VOS uh, router here I've set up. I could have set up two of them if I really wanted to, but I, you know, I got lazy. I just, I got one and it's going to link to site B and it's going to link to site A. Technically, I could have just set up two like this and then connect them. Okay. I could have done something like that. Uh, but anyways, I just kept it simple and easy. Uh, you'll see my uh, autonomous system number for my VOS is, is, is uh, 200, sorry. And for my sites here, basically my, uh, it's, where did I put that? Oh. Right here, autonomous system of 100, okay? So you'll see the links for my edges. So on the site A, it's on the 192.168.100 network. And uh, this is dot two for edge one, dot three for edge two, and the VIOS has the dot one address. Site two or site B, I kind of repeated the same thing, but notice it's on a different subnet, 192.168.110. And the edge node one has a dot two address, edge node three has a dot, sorry, edge node two on site B has a dot three, 
and the VOS for site B has a dot one here. Okay. Again, you can just kind of imagine. I just kept it like this just to show you kind of what's going on underneath the covers. Um, that's basically it, uh, logically, how I got things set up. So again, egressing, we're going out this way. So let's see what goes on underneath the covers here. So let's go back to here. And let's take a look at a routing perspective, right? Uh, so first of all, let's go over to my VOS router. So here we go. Yeah, I'm using VMware Workstation, folks. Um, now, if I quit, and if I just type in show IP route, if you wrote, you'll actually see, I can't highlight this, I'll do this in after editing, but you can see, I actually have four paths to the 172.16.10 network. So BGP has learned on this VIOS router, BGP has learned that the 172.16.10 network is via 192, 100.2, 100.3, 110.2, and 110.3. So what does that mean? That means the outside world coming in to let me fit black to my document here back actually let's go back to here let's go back to this as i mentioned before um i've got uh, my thing set up as um um uh, primary secondaries right so site a is my primary so everything is going to go out this way but the outside world sees this blue network and it can come in let me get rid of this it could come in through this way the 100 network or this way which may not be a good thing to be honest with you because this machine may come out here and come across and then the outside world when it's coming back in it could come back in this way and I just created asymmetric routing now if I had a physical firewall there a stateful firewall that's not gonna like it it's gonna drop it okay so this could cause some problems all right so how can i get around that i'll show you in a minute but let's see what's going on underneath the covers here how do i know that site b is using site a to send its information right let's go back to my camera here let's quit show configuration and there's a setting here that i did let me show where where are you yeah you can see the setting right here, default originate. Uh, for my protocols, uh, I'll highlight this in after editing, but default originate basically is saying, hey, VOS, uh, tell the routers that you talk to, that you peer with, to use you as their default gateway in case they don't know anything else. So uh, let me get rid of this now. Let's get out of here. Let's get rid of this guy. He's gone. And let's go into one of my edge nodes. Again, let's go back to my little diagram so everybody's on the same page. There we go. So I got my two edge nodes. I'm gonna go to edge node one, and I'm gonna go to edge node one on site B and A. Okay, so let's go into those, and let's look at the routing tables of that and see what's going on, okay? So let's go back to here. And I've already fired these up just to save some time. So the blue one, is my edge node one for site A. So blue is site A. So let me uh, get rid of this. Let me actually exit from here just to show it to you. And same thing over here. Let's quit this and exit. So you putty into your edge nodes. I'm gonna type in on my edge node one, get logical, and I've demoed this a few times, but just in case you're new to the channel, get logical routers. And at that point, you'll see, I wanna connect to the SR component of the gateway. So that's the SR component on the edge node one on site A. I want to get connect to that because that's what connects to the physical world and I want to see what it says. So, and it's VRF 11. So let's type in VRF 11. And I'm going to type in get IP route. I'll try, I think I always forget. Yeah, just get route, get route. And you see it's learned a default route from 192.168. 110.1 sorry yeah 100.1 sorry about that 100.1 so my site a edges got this default route from the vrf router said hey you know that's what that default or originate is right um so great perfect you'll notice uh yeah okay so that's good enough that's all i really care about right here there's other stuff in here too i got set up but it doesn't really matter all right now let's go to site b that's what the purple one is site b so let's type in get logical 
router. So again, I just SSH'd into my edge, logged in as admin, I'm gonna type get logical router, and you see the SR component for the edge, that tier zero gateway running on edge one on site B now, again, is VRF11. All right, hey, good, all right? They may not be the same numbers, folks, it just locked out. I type in VRF11, and I'm gonna type in get route. This is where things differ. Notice it's got two default routes, okay? And it says enter SR routing. And notice it's 169.254.32.4, 169.254.32.5. What the heck is going on there? Let's go back to this. Remember, when you've got it set up as uh, primaries and secondaries, whether I got, you know, three sites here, five, ten sites, the edges on your secondary site, any traffic coming into the edges, the secondary site is going to basically say, oh, you need to send it over there so it can go out because, again, this is the primary and all their egress traffic has to go out. So these num the numbers that we saw there should be the IP of the interfaces on these edges. Okay, let's take a look. Let's go back to here. Let's go to, so this, there's those interfaces, 169.254, 32.4, and 32.5. Let me go to my edge on site A. I'm on edge one on site A. Let's type in get interfaces. Now I'm going to probably have to scroll up a bit here. It's, it's scroll back a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to have to scroll up, up, and just see where I could find. Oh, maybe I went too far. Oops, sorry about that. That was my cell phone, folks. I always keep forgetting to mute that. Where are we? 169. It's in there. I just missed it. That's all. I'll find it. Where are you? Probably should go with a bigger screen here. Come on. There we go. Sorry. Took a little while. Here's the interface. Internal routing. 169.254.32.4. 30, That's on edge one on site A. Let's look at edge two on site A, just for the heck of it. So let me go into there. Site um, site A, edge two. Where are you? Come on, site A, edge two, right there. I'll log in as admin. Type in my password. And uh, I won't bother changing the font or anything like that. Let's type in get logical routers. And again, the SR and the tier zero, this is VR5, right? So it's different, VRF5. Now let's type in get, let's uh, type get route. So it has a default route going to the, the VOS. Yeah, because that's site A. It's going to the, the VOS, right? Because it's a, a default originate. Now let's just type in get interfaces I'm gonna scroll up I probably should have made the font bigger I'll scroll up and find it where are you there it's right there one six nine two five four thirty two five so this site site a NSX edge B or sorry NSX edge 2 has the dot five uh, site A, NSX one or Edge one. Sorry, I say NSX. Let me just repeat that. Site A, the Edge two has the dot five address thirty two dot five. Site A, Edge one has the thirty two dot four address. So that's why again, when we look at Site B edges, it's saying, oh, my default will go over to Site A. Okay, because I've got, that's what happens. Hey, let's see what happens now if I go in and change it to all primaries. All right, so let's go into here. I'm on my global manager. I'm going to go into networking. Let's go into um, my gateway, tier zero gateway. Let's go into um, my edit to my tier zero. And you'll see I've got my site A over here is my primary and site B is my secondary. If I had multiple sites, you'd see C, D, E. I only got two, that's it. I'm gonna say all primaries. I'm gonna click on that. They're all primaries now. I'm gonna hit save. That's done. I'm gonna go close editing, all right? What should I expect to see? 
typically when I say all primaries now, let's just go back to my little um, my iPad here. When I say all primaries, again, if you watch, my, that's primary, and let's say that's primary now, that means you got local egress. Each site will send its information out, okay? Um, potentially there's a problem with that because yeah, this guy may be talking to the outside world, but the return path could come back in this way. So you could have asymmetric routing issues. You gotta keep that in the back of your mind. More on that in a second, all right? So let's see what happened here. Let's go back to the left screen. Let's go into, I wanna minimize this. What we wanna do now is let's look at the edge on site B, right? Here's the routing table on site B. Remember I said it's gonna to go to site A. Let's look at, let's run that command again. Get route and come on, boom. Notice it's got a default route now going to 192.168.110.1. That is the interface for the VOS on site B. So now site B has local egress, okay? So you see how that changed things a bit, right? Let's put things back now. Um, let's go back to here. This I kind of notice a little quirk sometimes when I do this. I'm gonna to go to edit, I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna go set site A as primary, site B as secondary. Um, Priority, uh, failback priority, pri I, I only got priority one here because I only got two sites. One's gonna be primary and the other's gonna be secondary. If I had a third site here, let's say site C, it would say secondary and then priority two. And the priority two would be like your failback preferences, okay? When I, when, if, I'm, if I'm in a situation where I have to say the new primary site is this site, and I'll go through videos on that one for you, then you would say, okay, let's pick this, you know, the one with the highest priority, right? Uh, let's, this might give me an error. Let me, yeah, see, I always see this. Failback preference is not set, whatever. I'm going to delete this, site B. I'm going to add site B, secondary priority, pick the edge cluster, and it should work now. I don't know if that's a quirk or what. I'm running 4.1.1 here, right? So great. I'm just going to close editing. Let's go back to site B, and we should see that this default originate gone now, right? So it should go back. It should say I need to go back to site A for my egress. Boom, there we see it. So it's going back to site A now. Beautiful. All right, now we still have a problem though, okay? And I pointed this out earlier, right? So let's go back to my iPad. So great, everything is coming out site A, okay? Uh, the problem is, when I showed you on the outside world, the VIOS, it says I can get to site B through the 110 network or I can get to it through the 100 network. So in other words, I could potentially have um, this guy going out like this and then coming back in through here or this guy coming out like this then coming back in through here, potentially. So I have asymmetric routes. Or it could come back in this way, right? But there is a possibility, right? So that could cause issues, especially if you've got a physical stateful firewall or a stateful firewall. They don't like usually like that, okay? Uh, so let's go back into here, and let's go back to my VOS. Let's uh, show IP route. And we do see that right here. Again, I can't highlight it. Um, um, we do actually see that right here. We see 172.16.10. It's available through 192.168.100.2, 100.3, that's site A. And it's also available from 110.2, 110.3, that's site B. That's asymmetric. So we gotta, res we gotta fix that. We have to sour the path. So I need to go back in. Let's get out of here. I need to basically go to site B and sour this path a bit. So the outside world will say, uh, yeah, I know how to get to site B, but that path I don't really like, I'm always gonna use this path. It looks like it's a better path. And we're gonna do that with uh, path prepending, AS path prepending, okay? So I'll show you that one, how to do that right now. So let's flip back to here. Let's go into no, I didn't want to do that. That's sorry, wrong machine. There we go. So let's go in and configure this.
Okay, so let's go in and, and set this up, how we could spoil that path a little bit. Before I do that, I just want to make sure I'm clear on something here. Um, so I again, I said site B is sending its traffic out via site A, and you can see that here in, in um, when I'm showing you uh, its default routes going back to site A. Uh, again, that's done through uh, an internal link that's created by Federation, and it's using IBGP to do this. I didn't have to do anything. It was automatically done for me. But that tells me that I cannot be using IBGP to get to the outside world. It must be EBGP, which I've set up. So this internal IBGP, I didn't have to do anything. It did it for me automatically, okay? So let's go in and see how we can fix this issue that we have with the external router, seeing site A and site B, as an equal path to that web segment okay so let's go into edit a couple things I need to do I'm gonna go into routing I'm gonna go into prefix prefix uh, lists here and I'm gonna add an IP prefix list and I'm gonna say whatever um, any any prefix whatever and I'm gonna set it I'm gonna add it and I'll say any and I'll say action is allow sorry printer it I'll add and then I'll apply and I'll save, okay, and I'll close. And by the way, folks, I am not, I don't eat BGP for breakfast every morning. There's some guys that do this stuff on a daily basis. I'm not one of them. Uh, I know I'm dangerous. I know how to get around to certain things, right? Uh, if you've got other suggestions on how to achieve what I'm doing, hey, leave the detailed stuff in the comments below. I'd be interested to hearing that. Okay, so I made a prefix list here. Let's go into route maps, and I'm going to add a route map here. And I'm going to call this whatever um, site B map, right? And I'm going to set my criteria. I'm going to add a criteria here, and it's going to be IP IP prefix. I'll say members, and I'll pick that any prefix. And I spell prefix wrong. <laughs> whatever, whatever. You get what you pay for, right, folks? <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to hit apply there. And then notice over here AS path prepend. So my autonomous system number that I have internally here is 100, okay? Yours is gonna be different. So I'm gonna prepend to it 100. And what that means is the outside world's gonna look at this network and say, oh, for me to get to that web network, I gotta go through AS100 and AS100, makes it look longer, so it's not as nice. I'm gonna go add and say apply. Oops, I made a mistake there. Just notice it. Let me go back to that. Uh, let me edit this. I have to put this to permit. Okay. So I'll add. There we go. I get the green. Apply. Save. Site B map. Close. Great. Now, under BGP, you'll see my local autonomous system is 100 here. And my neighbors, you'll see site A and site B. So when you're setting this up in Federation, you got to set up your neighbors for all your sites. Kind of makes sense. I'm going to go to set. And right over here, again, this is my uh, site B. I'm going to go edit neighbors, edit settings. And then under that neighbor, notice I can get to that neighbor. That's my VOS router, 192.168.110.1. And I can get to it by both of these edges, the dot two and dot three, okay? And I'm just going to go route filter, and I'm going to go add route filter, IP4, and then out filter. There's my, where's my map? There we go, site B map. Come on, site B map. And um, I'll do the in filter site B map as well. Sorry about that. Okay, I had to take that phone call. But hey, we're back, right? So I'm going to click add there. I'm going to apply it. So I put that filter on the um, on the neighbor for site B on the tier zero gateway. Let's close this and let's close editing. Let's see what happened now. Let's go back to my VOS router, wherever it is. It's over here. Now, again, if we look, I'll highlight this in edits. If we look, we see right now I haven't done anything. But the 172.16.10 network is available between via four different paths 192.168.100.2, let me refresh this. 
So as you can see, when I refreshed it now, there's only two paths to the 172.16 network. It's uh, via 192.168.100.2 and 100. <coughs> excuse me. Dot three. Okay, but maybe I messed things up. So if I actually run this command here, just to see what the costs were, uh, show IP BGP. Um, uh, 172.16.10.0. <coughs> excuse me. You'll actually see, um, and I'll highlight these. You'll actually see we prepended two 100 uh, to it. So there's actually the two top entries shows to me to get to that network. I got to go to AS 100, then AS 100, then AS 100 again. Uh, whereas the bottom two show me all I have to do is go through AS 100. So the bottom two look like a better path to take because it's less hops right whereas the top two looks like more now uh, when I was doing my demo there uh, I actually added two 100s to it I could have done something like this let me just um, um, I go back in actually no I didn't want to do that wrong machine let's go back to here all right so if I go to site B actually sorry not gonna go to site B I'm going to go to my route maps I'm gonna edit that route map and let's edit this guy, edit. And then over here, see where I prepended 100 twice? Only do it once. That's technically all I really needed to do. Apply it, save it, and close. Now when I go back, let me get my VOS router up here again. Where are you? I'm gonna go back to VOS router. Should change, yeah. So the two top entries again, I'll highlight this two top entry now has 100 prepended once, so it's 100, 100. That's it. So if I had like eight sites and I wanted site one uh, to be the site where traffic goes in and out, I would prepend site two with, with 100, let's say site three with another one. Uh, so each site you would just keep adding, adding more on which one would be your backup type of thing, right? So again, um, in my example that I did, I did 100 twice. That would probably be for site C. If I had a site D, I would do 100 three times, right? So site D looks worse than, you know, site C and site B sort of thing. Um, let's do this now. See, let's do this, let me get rid of that. Let me go to here. So we know that web one's on site B and we're going to access site web one via site A, right? Because we um, did that prepending on the path. So let's just make check on you know, connectivity. Good. Yeah, I got I'm hitting web one. Let's do a trace route 72.16.10.11. And that should be going through um, again going through site A going across the RTAPs and hitting web one at that point, okay? I should have probably had web one on site A, web two on site B, but yeah, oh well. All right, so that's hitting my, a gateway in my environment. There's two gateways in my environment here. I got my lab environment kind of like buried in, buried through gateways. I got to redo things. Okay, this is what I wanted to see here. <clears throat> the 192.168.100.2, let us finish. Come on, and then boom, that's web one now. So, okay. The 192.168.100.2, that's the edge node 2 on site A. So I'm accessing web 1, which is on site B, through site A. Let's do a failure. Let's, um, where's my thing here, Bill? There we go. Let me go to my VOS. Actually, sorry. You see on the VOS, again, I'll highlight this, 172.16 is via 192.168.100.2 and 100.3. That's that's site A. Let's pull out the interface for site A. Site A's interface is number two. I disconnect it. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's refresh this. 
notice it, it switched over pretty quick. Again, I'll highlight this. Notice now 172.16.10 network is available via 192.168.110.2 and 110.3. That's the edge nodes on site B. So the my physical router on the outside, well, we know it's a VM, um, can actually now says, hey, that network is available through site B. Let's go and let's uh, minimize this, get it out of the way. I don't want to do that. Wrong minimizing. Give me a second here. This is the one I want. Let's go back down and do the trace route. Remember, before it was showing me I was going through site A. Come on, don't make a lighter out of me. Give it a few seconds. Here we go. Come on. So it's hitting my router's my environment. It's going into my lab environment. I got things set up a little differently. Okay. This is the true task here. Notice it's 192.168.110.2. That's site B. All right. That's actually ed, edge node edge node one. I'm sorry on site B. So there we go. So I'm accessing now that web to to site B. Now let's look over here. This is the edge nodes on site B. Remember I said, oh, they, they're they're using they're sending their default routes to site A. Site A is gone. It's a crater, right? Let's see what happens now. Notice now, they notice that that one's gone, and they're going to use their default route to the VOS in, or the router in site B because it knows that, that that site A is no longer there. So that's automatic failover, which is actually kind of cool. Um, let's go back to my iPad. Now, obviously, uh, let's clear things up. So site A is gone. It's history. Uh, I had web 2. This was web 2 over here. Web 2. Dot 12. It's gone. Uh, so I, I got automatic recovery of my network, right? Which is kind of really cool. It was out for like, what, a second or two? Um, uh, I may have dropped a couple of pings. I probably should have had a ping run there, but it doesn't really matter. Um, now, Web 2, if Site A is dead, Web 2 over here is not accessible anymore, okay? So how do I fail that over? Well, that's not part of NSX. That's part of a product called Site Recovery Manager where you can actually go in and do a recovery now. Let's say Site A is gone. It's history, right? You can do a recovery of your workloads to Site B, and they're up and running within whatever amount of time they are. That's a totally different thing, and that's called Site Recovery Manager. I'll do videos on that later. Um, I think that's enough for this one. Uh, I'll do another one. Which, right now, my Tier 0, my Tier 1 has no services. What happens if I throw services on my Tier 1? can get a little interesting. I'll do a video on that one later, okay? Uh, but that's it. I hope you found this beneficial. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Even if you found it entertaining, give it a thumbs up anyways. Mm -hmm. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. I very much appreciate it. Uh, again, I don't get monetized until I hit 1,000 subscribers at least, but again, more subscribers, better. Uh, but I would really appreciate it. Uh, without subscribers, uh, there's no content developers. That's it. Leave your comments below. Hope you enjoyed this. If there's something you want to see or do or whatever, let me know. I'll do my best. I'm limited on resources for now, and uh, uh, that's it. Thanks again, and have a great day. See you in the next one. Bye now.